all right hello everyone and peace of christ to all of you today our topic is very important and actually every day topic is important for the sake of education in the same time uh, i believe what we do here is very important to uh, let us say do brain training you know some people don't want or let us say they are not usually to use their brain um, for me i believe using the brain is a kind of a joy it's one of my best reasons to live you know god gave me a gift and i like to use it uh, satan satan he is a, as a person he is an evil one supposedly and he is um, in exist um, you know even in islam and we notice that Islam copy the word for Satan as Iblis. And you can check the roots of this Iblis, where it's coming from, and you will be surprised. Iblis. But Iblis in Islam is not the same as Satan in Christianity. So uh, today we will see that not only the God of Islam is not the same as the God of Christianity, as we showed you yesterday, as you remember, the God of Islam is not a spirit. He is a physical being. The God of Christianity, he is a spirit, whatever the word spirit mean. So, by nature, the God of Islam is not the same as the God of Christianity. The heaven of Islam is not the same as the heaven of Christianity. Everything in Islam has nothing to do with the Christianity. Yes, Muhammad, he copies some names just to fabricate himself and make himself look better. And that goes even for Satan. Satan in Islam is better than Allah. And today we are going to prove that and I challenge any Muslim to say to, to say to me you are lying I will show you with the proofs that Satan in Islam is a good person the bad one is Allah you know the uh, uh, the one who fabricate the cult of Islam He is not really uh, so much uh, like he don't have a good intelligence. How and who is this shaitan? How he became a shaitan in Islam? The first thing you need to take a note about He is not an angel as Christians believe he is not a foreign angel the problem with the Christians who they are not educated most of them uh, they think that when the Muslim they use the same words that's mean they believe in the same thing like when Muslim he says Jesus that's mean he believe in Jesus no he don't believe in he don't even have the word Jesus in his Quran they have a guy his name is Isa his mother her name is Mary actually Maryam and she is the sister of a guy his name is Aaron so we don't have such a person in the whole Bible who is Miriam she is the daughter of a guy his name is Omron and she have a brother his name is Moses and her brother his name is Aaron that's not exist when a Muslim he speak about adultery Many Christians, because they are naive, they think Islam forbid adultery. The fact Islam promote adultery. Adultery in the Bible is just looking and wishing to have a woman she is not yours. Adultery in Islam, if you don't have intercourse with the women, that is not adultery. Secondly, if two men, if, if, if two person, male and female, they agree to have sexual intercourse for a payment, that is not adultery. They call it muta. And the same goes for everything. Like uh, Muslim, they say to you, Islam is against theft to the point if you steal, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> we cut your hand. But they will not tell you that all of Islam is based on theft. I'm not going to start with the theft of his stories. Muhammad, he took from people before him, including the story of Alexander the Great. 
a fiction story of the seven sleepers the flying carpet of Suleiman which is taken from the legion of the Jews this is not what I'm talking about Islam allow you to steal money from non-muslims for the Arkufar. kuffar Islam forbid killing an innocent person but what the Muslim will not tell you that innocent people in Islam only Muslims if you are not Muslim you are guilty so generally speaking uh, Christians because they don't know much about Islam they assume that when Muslims use some certain words those words is the same or have the same definition we have in Christianity and that is a big a huge mistake the same as we see some naive Christian they say that the Muslims are the children of Ishmael or even the Arab which is very funny and very false there's nowhere in the Bible it says such a thing even Muslims they, they say that Ishmael he learned Arabic at the age of 11 so today we are going to do some correction for some beliefs and some misunderstanding and I hope the Muslims will be listening carefully and let us introduce to you mr. Satan why Satan he became an enemy to Allah the story in the Quran let us go to the Quran and we find how the story and how and what happened what happened exactly one of the proof that Islam is false is this a story which we will see in front of us in a second the story starts from here chapter 2 verse number 30 for sure you can read verses before but that you know as as usual Quran is not really connected with each other which means the verse here have nothing to do with the verse before it or the verse after there's nothing there's no connection suddenly he's talk about creating Adam so here it says Allah said to the angels Allah he said to the angels I am about to create a caliphate in the earth somebody to inherit the earth they said will you create their end somebody will do bloodshed Allah he did not agree with them he said to them I know what you know not which mean you do not know what are you talking about this is not a true so the angel accused Adam that he would do mischievement if he created him if Allah created him Allah did not agree and he says surely I know that which you know not surely what he is in this agreement about them saying that this man he would do bloodshed my Skype is not open so don't waste your time for calling now later if I open it I will let you know we don't want anyone to disturb us until we finish here you notice very uh, silly story it's not even fit for kids you see if angels if angels are just servant of Allah why even Allah is telling the angels about what he will do are you asking them for advice it looked like it if you're asking them for advice and they give you the advice so why you are asking somebody who know not what you know you know what I mean it's like I you are my friend and I say to you I need your advice what do you think I should do and then you tell me what you think about what I should do and then after you say to me what what I should do I say to you, you are a stupid you do not know what are you talking about are we getting the point 
So why Allah is saying to the angels, I'm going to do this? You are God. That's it. Do what you want to do. What this conversation is about. Allah is a God of democracy suddenly. Then the story get more exciting and more silly. In the Bible, it says that God, he taught Adam all the names. But there, it's about giving him knowledge. Not about this. So look what Muhammad, he made out of that verse. Allah now, because they said to him that Adam will do bloodshed, Allah decide to prove them wrong. How Allah, the Muslim Allah, uh, the genius uh, uh, Allah, he want to do that. Look at this plan. Plan is genius plan. So he taught Adam all the names. Then he showed them to the angels. He showed them what? The names of the things. Or the things, sorry. Here the translation is not really too much, uh, you know, uh, accurate. So Allah taught Adam names. Like this is a phone, this is a microwave, uh, this is zucchini, this is a cucumber. Okay. Now Allah, he placed all those items in, in the front of the angels. And now Allah want to examine their knowledge. So he said to them, all right, tell me the names of those things if you are truthful. I mean, how silly is that is? I mean, come on. What do you mean if you are truthful? So Allah accusing the angels to be a bunch of liars. You see, if I say to you, if you are truthful, what does that mean? It's mean you are not a truthful. Correct? As simple as that. And what is that? What does that mean? It's mean you are a liar. The angels of Allah, from the beginning, they are a bunch of liars. This is what the story is telling us. If you are a truthful, inform me the names of those things. How what this connection between being truthful and the names? The, the connection is very simple. They said that Adam will shed the blood. Allah does not agree. So he said, surely I know which you know not. So Allah, he come with a, with a genius method to prove that they do not know. And they are liars. So now he taught Adam all the names. And if there are people who know the unseen, or those angels, they know the unseen, well, they should know the names. As simple as that but this is very funny and very stupid why because I prove what and to who if you ask me uh, you know what is the name of my cat and I do not know the name of your cat and you say to me the name of my cat is Susu and that to prove that I'm a liar and you are God you are the one who named the cat what about we do the opposite <laughs> what about you ask me to name something hmm? and then I challenge you that you because you are God huh? I did not tell you what I said in my head I will name it I will give it a name in my head I will not even move my lips now because you are a God I say to you okay inform me the names of these if you are truthful that will make more sense but what Allah did is the opposite Hmm? What Allah did is totally the opposite. He is the one who gave the names, and now he is examining them. And because they do not know the names, that supposedly he know better. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this before? I am the one who gave the name. What does this have to do with knowledge? You know what I mean? What does this have to do with knowledge? Then the funny story continue. Here the angels got busted, supposedly. Look how funny and stupid the story. The angels, they said, be glorified. We have no knowledge save what you have taught us. Look, hold on. How, how you have no knowledge save what we taught us, but just a minute ago you said that Adam will shed the blood. So where this knowledge coming from? Any Muslim can tell us? Is that from Satan? If the angels know not except what Allah taught them, 
and this is confirmed in this verse either the angels are a bunch of liars and they are lying here because Allah did not tell them that Adam will shed the blood and he didn't agree with that so where did they get this from that's mean Islam confirmed that angels are a bunch of liars and they are deceiving people or cre creatures and then because Allah he taught the names to Adam the angels they admit that you are the only true art knower and wise why because he gave names to things and he know the names that is the most silly story ever stupid funny silly is not even good for a child he is at the age of five now the drama continue and remember today our topic is about the satan but we have to do some uh, direction for the story so we can show you what happened so here then the, the angels they have to admit that Allah is all knowledgeable that's it and then Allah he did not stop there Allah want to get them more busted so he said to Adam hey Adam <laughs> Adam huh, Adam show them Habibi Adam Habibi huh? show them Adam show them huh? tell them the names you see your angels you do not know the name Adam will tell you so now Adam starts saying zucchini microwave potato tomato cheese kebab falafel hummus and this is how Allah he got the angel busted and then the story is not finished yet now Allah have to punish the angels for accusing for for claiming that they knew more than him that Adam will shed blood so look what he did and when he said into the angels prostrate yourself before Adam Allah is ordering the angels to bow down to Adam do you see it the first God the first person in history according to Islam who order someone to bow to someone who is not God is Allah himself the founder of corruption that someone should bow to someone else he is not God is Allah here we need to ask ourselves who is higher and who is lower Adam the sinner or angels who Muslims they are supposedly not sinners but as you see angels already here they are proven to be sinners they accuse Allah that he will create somebody will do shed the blood hmm? you see it Are you going to create someone who would do bloodshed and he would do mischief in this earth? And here, Allah, he ordered all the angels to bow down to Adam. But look what happened. Here we arrive to something more funny. So all the angels, they bow down to Adam. Except Iblis. Here, who noticed the story, the mistake in the story here? Who noticed the, the big mistake, stupid mistake in the story? Who noticed with me? Anyone can help, help, help us? What is the stupid mistake in the story? Allah, he ordered who? To bow down, the angels. So why Iblis would bow down? If you remember, I just told you, don't make mistakes and don't mix things up between Christianity and Islam. In Islam, Iblis or Satan, he is a genie. He is not an angel. Now, somebody with a Christian background, he do not know that this information, he will think there's nothing wrong here. No, but there's a big mistake here. Because Iblis in Islam, he is one of the jinn. And jinn in Islam is not a demon, as some silly Christian they keep saying. You know that Muslim believe in demon. They call them jinn. That's false. Jinn are not demon. They are not evil spirit. Jinn, according to Muslims, they are according to Quran too, created from fire. And they, there's good genie and there's a bad genie. Even there's a Muslim genie. There's a Christian genie. There's a Hindu genie. There's an atheist genie. There's a gay genie. 
all right according to Muslims the Muslim genie he live in the house of Muslims the Christian genie he live in the house of the Christians the Buddha the atheist etc he live in each one like you know they, they they live together in a community and where they live usually they attach themselves to like a spider to your ceiling and they don't move it during the daytime but when you sleep they move this why you hear some voices according to Muslims Iblis Iblis is another proof that Allah is false we can search in Google what is the root of the word Iblis and then you need to ask yourself why Allah is copying such a word But we will not go for now for with this, you know. Uh, but it's going to be interesting if you decide to your own to do your own study for this uh, uh, for this word. If you go to Islamic website. I'm going to show you something. Music. This is the Muslim website has a music story. No, just stop it. Forget. Sorry for that. <laughs> And I don't know how to stop this Muslim website and music, but anyway, I wanted to show you the purpose of Shaitan in Islam. It's very funny. Shaitan, he is refused to obey Allah and to bow down to Adam. But Allah, He ordered angels, He did not order Shaitan. Shaitan is not an angel, He is not one of them. And that's again a very stupid mistake in the Quran, which is a chain of mistakes and in English mistakes. And then after that, Allah He said, O Adam, do were thou and the wife in the garden and eat freely from the fruit, but don't eat from this tree. And obviously, he is copying someone else's story. And here you will notice that it says, But Satan caused them. To deflect their for their form and expel them from the happy state which means from heaven <coughs> hold on here there's a mistake in this story <coughs> And I don't know how Muslims can live with this book. If we go in different verse in the Quran or different chapter, we will find the following. Chapter 20. And the story start from here. We made a covenant of old with Adam, but he forgot. What is the covenant? That not to eat from the tree. But Adam did not forget. The other verse on the Quran confirms something different. <laughs> Here it says that Satan caused him to disobey Allah and to eat from the tree. Here it says that he forgot the covenant. 
and then suddenly the Quran jump and says and when we say it into the angels fall prostrate before Adam they fail prostrate all save Iblis he refused again Allah he ordered the angels so why Iblis will bow down he isn't an angel and then therefore we say to Adam this is your enemy into thee and your wife so let him not drive you both out of the garden but hold on when Allah he speak about Iblis He refused to disobey or refused to obey sorry Allah he kicked him out from heaven Allah he kicked him out of heaven already how he was able to get in any Muslim in the bushes If Allah kicked shaitan out of the heaven already, how shaitan he get in again? Let us go to different verse so we can love better. As you see, the Quran is not the same as the Bible. Like, you know, you go to the book of Genesis, you find where the, the, the whole world is created. Quran is a mixed chish kebab, falafel, hummus, whatever. You know, you, the story is all over. If you go to chapter 7, you will see there's a contradiction in the story. And we created you, and we fashioned you, and then told the angels, fall ye prostrate before Adam. And they fail and prostrate all save a priest who was not of those who make prostrate. Allah now ask Iblis what why you did not bow down Iblis he said I am better than him you created me from fire while you created him from dust and mud but here the story is more stupid actually because why Iblis he said that well he you know he should say will you order the angels I am not an angel <laughs> and then the story continue Allah he said then go down hence it is not for thee to show a pride go down go down where out of heaven you can change the translation if this translation is not suitable for you Abdul I mean I don't think I'm favoring the translation above others. You can all Islamic translation is shish kebab for me. They are a bunch of lies. Get down of this. Get down of this what? The heaven. Change the translation again. I will show you all the translations you choose. This is Yusuf Ali. Uh, I will choose, uh, you know, uh, Maududi. Muslim, they like Maududi. Mr. Dudi. Hmm? Get down from here. Here. Get down. Okay, and here by the way, anyone notice there's some uh, mistakes in this verse? Once I was debating a Muslim uh, sheikh who claimed to be a sheikh, his beard is long, and the idiot he said to me, Will the garden, the heaven of Adam, it was an earth? <laughs> I said to him, This is in the Bible, <laughs> this is not in your Quran. He said, No, you are an idiot, you do not know what are you talking about heaven the garden the garden of adam in islam it was not on earth and this is why he says to him get down from here and this is why the angels and adam are in the same place because they are in heaven So take additional note that don't be confused 
the heaven of Adam in Islam is not the same heaven of Adam in Christianity or Judaism where the heaven of Adam in Islam was in the sky the uh, the, the heaven or the garden of Adam was an earth take a note about that Satan replied saying It's challenging Allah. Okay, wait for me. Wait for me until the day of judgment. Huh? Let us see. Let me show you what I will do. Allah accept the challenge. I said, okay. I grant you that. I will be see. I will see what you can do. And then Shaitan he said, since you have led me astray. I shall surely sit in ambush for them on your straight path. Anyone notice something very weird here? Anyone noticing something weird in the story? Who notice? Allah, he led Satan astray. By the way, who is the one is talking here? Still is Allah, but supposedly the one is talking now is 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 Satan, and Allah tell us what Satan he said. But as you see, Allah did not say, "I did not lead you astray." He did not even. And that's it. Yes, I did you astray. So you notice here that Allah is the one who led. Satan astray and by the way here it doesn't say even let me astray it says awaitani awaitani what awaitani mean you know in uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to find you a close word to the English like if a if a if a woman she seduce a man to have sex with her uh, illegal sex let us say you know something uh, a sin this is what a white any mean you know what I mean a white any is not just a word mean uh, you led me astray it's more than that which mean a in this point was playing the devil let me I will uh, uh, I will see if I can find you the word in English, English Arabic translation. Hmm. This is an Islamic dictionary. Here. Let me show you first the Arabic. And I, I notice right away how the Arabic does not fit with the English translation. Agwa ism adal. What adal mean? Deceive. Agwa agra. Agwa adal. What does that mean? Let us see. Read carefully with me and see what it says. Here they put the word led astray. Misguided, misleaded. Allah misguided and misleaded Satan. Satan is not a bad person. Satan, he was misleaded and misguided by Allah. Do you see it? And here it give you all the uh, you know uh, uh, the meaning for this word can come, but here in this case it is coming as you are the one who you know deceived me. And even the Muslim translation uh, they did not go far from the original meaning. They say yes, let me astray, as you see. Hmm? So even the Muslim translation they say let me astray. Here we notice. That shaitan 
is not a bad person in Islam. In fact, Allah and Shaitan, they have an agreement. I will let you go and deceive them. Shaitan, he made an offer. And Allah accept the offer. Why? Because Allah is the one who mis misguided the shaitan. One of the things uh, Quran teach that shaitan is a Muslim. How we can prove that? Shaitan is just a servant of Allah. If we go to different verse in the Quran, we will find the following. Shaitan, chapter 59, verse number 16. Here, uh, the word hypocrite, by the way, is not in the verse. This is an addition. It says, on the likeness of the devil, when he tells a man to disbelieve, then when he disbelieves, he says, Lo, I am, I, I am a, a quit of thee. Lo, I fear Allah, the Lord of the world. <laughs> Shaitan is a Muslim. He believes in Allah, he fear Allah, and he have a job. His job is just to deceive you. You know what I mean? He is not a he is not a bad person in Islam. He is just doing a job. He is a believer in Allah and he fear Allah and he worship Allah. And Shaitan, he says it clearly, I I my I wash my hands from you, the one who you disbelieve in Allah. I'm not like you. I believe in Allah, I worship Allah, I fear Allah. Then if we go here to the story, after Shaitan, he says, you did lead me astray. I am going to ambush them. I will ambush them and I will sit in the front of them in every, every path. Then here, we have the biggest mistake ever you can imagine. Remember, Allah said to Adam, to, sorry, he said to Shaitan, get down from here. But after that, again, Allah, he confirmed that he kicked him out. Allah said, go away from here. Disgraced and expelled. I shall fill the hell with those who follow thee. So Shaitan, that said, he is out of heaven. And then Allah, he said to Adam, you, Adam, and your wife, live in the garden. And you eat from it whenever you will. But never approach the tree, or you shall be came a wrongdoer here again shaitan appear again but satan he made an evil suggestion to both of them but hold on adam is in heaven shaitan already is expelled how shaitan was able to whisper to them how shaitan was able to get in the heaven again Are we listening, guys? 
remember Quran confirm and by the way why we don't have a lot of people maybe today is Saturday I should not do like broadcast are you guys Saturday ah, you go out and Christian Prince is sitting here teaching you ah, you people go to the park have fun etc and Christian Prince the poor guy he is sitting here losing his voice okay I'm not going to do it in Saturday no more no problem all right Allah he said to Shaitan get out and after that he told Adam to go in the garden not only he get him out he expelled him with shame expelled him from where from heaven because up to this point all they are in heaven then how shaitan get in remember in different verse in the Quran I mean you have to keep opening verses after verses it's in this because the Quran is like stupid stories scattered all over uh, shaitan he cannot enter heaven otherwise Allah will shoot his ass with the stars chapter 67 verse number 5 Allah said and verily we beautified the word heaven with lamps and we made them missiles for the devil what does that mean you see the Quran confirmed that Allah he protected the Muslim they say to you do you know that in the Quran we can find a protected roof protected what roof okay uh, what does that mean uh, which mean uh, the atmosphere brother you know it doesn't mean that protected roof that's mean the sky is a protected not the earth and we made the sky a roof with healed protected roof how we can explain that here Allah will shoot the shaitan if he try to go to the sky It's not the opposite. Atmosphere is the earth protected from what is coming from uh, from uh, uh, from the space. Here, it's the opposite. It is you cannot go out of the earth. In different verse in the Quran, Allah He claim that no human being can go out of the earth. And if they try, Allah will shoot their ass the same as we see in the screen. In chapter 55, verse number 33, it says, Ya ma'ashara jinni wal ins, in istata'atum an tanfudhu min aqtari samawati wal ard, fanfudhu wa la tanfudhuna illa bi sultan. Let us show the verse. O company of jinn and men, if you have power to penetrate the regions of the heaven and the earth, penetrate, but you will never penetrate save by our sanctions. And here the Muslim is explained that this is only happened for the angels and the prophets of God if you want to take them to heaven. That's it. Otherwise, no human, no genie can do that. But this is a proven to be false because already human being satellites and you know a spaceship all over and actually they are planning to have a normal trip for visitors for the moon in the coming uh, uh, six or seven years so uh, citizens who have money they can go and buy a ticket and go to the moon so Allah here is a challenging all not only human human and genie which we never saw one that if you can go out of the zone of the earth go and if you try, Allah will send on you fire. He will burn you. 
in the other verse we showed you it says that Allah will show them with the lamps so now as long we confirm that shaitan is out of heaven and if shaitan try to get inside the heaven Allah will shoot him with lamps and the heaven is protected by Star War machines guns then how shaitan he misguided Adam and Eve he's already out right he's already expelled he ordered him twice in this story in front of us he said to him here get down you see the Muslim they say to us if Allah says something is going to be he says be is going to be so Allah when he said to him get down he's still there no again in the other verse here just after it before even he said to Adam go to, to, to the garden he said to him get out of here with shame and disgrace expelled and then just a verse after it Adam is enjoying the heaven and then just a verse after it shaitan is whispering to them so what we learn from this shaitan is a good guy and he was a victim of Allah if you remember once we were debating a Muslim Abdul about Adam and the sin of Adam anyone remember what the Abdul he said to me about that when Adam commits sin <clears throat> who remember let us see your memory uh, yes Allah <laughs> thank you who is the one who said Peter I look like Peter is the best of you guys Peter is the right away in the spot he's listening and he is uh, he's learning look here when Adam was accused by Musa in a very funny story I mean how Musa's and Adam they met I mean that is silly Adam and Musa's eh, everything is possible in Islam in, in Muhammad's stories so Adam and Musa's they met together how maybe in the coffee shop maybe in Starbucks things happen in Islam brother things happen but the story here proving to us that all the sin we do is not our sin the bad person is not is not shaitan in Islam the bad person is not you the bad person is not Adam the bad person is Allah and the proven in front of you Adam and Musa's they have a disputation a debate Musa says to Adam you are our father who deprived us and caused us to come out of paradise Adam said you Moses you are the one who Allah speak to you I mean he favor you by speaking to you and he wrote the Torah for you by your hand by his hand by the way according to Muslims the whole Torah written by the hand of Allah not the Ten Commandment take a note so you can imagine how many trucks Moses have to carry rocks all the Torah written in, in rocks big rocks not the Ten Commandment only this is one of the funny stories of Muhammad now look what Adam he says to Musa do you blame me for doing a deed which Allah had decreed that I should do 40 years before he created me I should what I should do do you see it Adam he commits sin this is not his sin this is a decreed by Allah in his destiny he should do he have no choice so Adam saying to him you want to play me for what you idiot Allah he wrote the Torah for you Allah he spoke to you yes still you have you are stupid you do not know what are you talking about why you play me if this is something decreed to me that I should do 40 years before creating me and look what Muhammad he said so Adam got a better argument of Musa argument actually in the Arabic it says so uh, Adam he uh, 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 like uh, he won the debate like he uh, he uh, 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 he came he came with the correct answer Muhammad agree with that 
and actually Muhammad he repeated the answer three times that Adam have a have a good answer three times. Read with me carefully. This is the same hadith, different translation. So Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Moses three times. Muhammad always have to repeat three three times. So Adam is a good guy. Allah is a bad God. Allah He made Adam to commit sin. Adam have no choice but to commit sin because this is his destiny. And this is my friend, the story of Islam. Satan is a victim. Adam is a victim. You as a victim. Everybody is a victim. And even Muhammad he said, Allah He needs sinners. And if you don't commit sin, Allah will kill you. The messenger of Allah said, If you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of the existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. So what the what this God is about? This God is a joker. He is a self-worshipping person. He's a mad person. He wants you to commit sin. He like it because then you have to beg for mercy. If you don't commit sin, you will not beg for mercy. So what the reason he, he created Adam? Because he want Adam to commit sin. And then what he would do? He would say, please forgive me. Please. This, is what Allah, he, this is what he want. This is why the Quran says, I, I create not the human being except to worship me. Chapter 51, verse number 56, it says it clearly, the purpose of the creation of mankind. This is a mad God, stupid God. I created the jinn and mankind only that they might worship me. Uh, and well, how we worship him? As you see, the hadith make it clear. You commit sin, you ask for my forgiveness, otherwise I will burn you. And the sin, we find that this sin he wrote for you is not the sin you made. As an example, we show you the sin of Adam. I saw a comment of one of the Christians. He said that God, he loves sinners. That's not true. That's not true. God loved the world, not a group. They, you call them sinners. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son to save the world, not just the sinners. At the end of the day, all of us, we are sinners, right? So God, he loved the world. He don't love sinners. When you say God, he loves sinners, that's silly. That's stupid, actually. When you say it in such a way, in such a you know, you know, when a Christians they try to try to present Christianity to a, someone like a Muslim, Muslim will not only be uh, uh, like what those guys are talking about. He will take it wrong. God, he loves sinners. What do you mean? That's mean that when you say it in such a way. It's mean okay, let us do sin because Allah he like it. It's like Muhammad saying, Allah he love those who sneeze. So what we would do now? Let us sneeze. So sometimes Christians, when they speak, they, 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 they speak like the silly Muhammad. They do not know what they are talking about. They just, okay, Jesus, he loved everybody. So, okay, Jesus loved the sinners. No, this is not the truth. He don't love us because we are sinners. He loves us because he loves us. Not because of our sin. Our sin actually is making, away, making us apart away from him. It is the opposite. Jesus said, I came for the sick, which means you are sick. He don't love you because you are sick, but he is helping you because you are sick, because he loves you already, not because of your sickness. Here, you will notice one of the funny things about the nature of Allah. Allah, he hates those who do yawning. Why? 
because if you do yawning shaitan he jump inside your mouth and he laugh at you ha 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 However, Allah love those who sneeze. And actually, I was thinking to open and to start a new show. It's called Let Us Sneeze for the Sake of Allah. And we take Muslims calling one by one and they sneeze life on air. So Allah, he will get happy and excited and he will start moving his feet like Ahmad, the dead terrorist. Have you ever heard of a God like this? God, he loved those who sneeze. I mean, how silly, how stupid, how what is what this Muhammad is talking about? I mean, what the, what what kind of God is talking about? Is that a cartoon? From the teaching of Muhammad, I assume that Allah gets so excited in winter time, and he don't feel good in summer time, because in winter time everybody is sneezing Allah get excited when it is dusty so we might sneeze Allah get upset when you are doing yawning for this is from the devil brother do you not do you do yawn brother oh brother the devil is in your mouth now the Muslim once they made an article about the Prophet teaching us science and the article was talking about that the prophet said when you do yawn cover your mouth and the muslim they say according to studies etc when you do yawn a liquid will come from your mouth full of germs but this is not the reason you liar why you don't why you cut it what about says because shaitan he left inside your opening shaitan he will jump inside your mouth this is why he says to you cover your mouth he is not about teaching you science but because they are liars they make it about science what is silly and stupid suddenly became scientifically correct and this is what they do always when they switch the silliness and the madness and the stupidity of the quran and the hadith to make it fit with science anyway i can stay longer by the way because i am going to uh, uh take a shower and I will not turn the heater on I want to be uh, I want to have cold so I can feel the sneeze and I sneeze for the sake of Allah and that will make Allah happy from me this is how silly this cult is and you know as long as we are talking about shaitan don't forget that Muhammad he have many ideas of shaitan as an example if you are a black Creature, you are a shaitan. This is why Muhammad he ordered to kill all black animals. They asked Muhammad, What is the difference between a yellow dog? You know, Muhammad he made the women, by the way, women in Islam are equal to a donkey and a black dog, and women are all equal. I said, oh, Abu Dhar, what feature there is the black dog which is distinguished from red dog or yellow dog? He said, oh, son of my brother, I ask the messenger of Allah the same as you asked me. And he said, the black dog is the devil. <sighs> ah, oops, shaitan is inside my mouth. Let me take a selfie. Uh, at you uh, Allah is happy I just received a donation from Allah <laughs> for he got excited now he's asking me for more uh, sneezing this is how silly the cult is super uh, stations fabrications stories don't match contradictions and this madness and I hope today we cover all or let us say most important issues about this thing i will try later to come on air maybe but maybe today is saturday so most of you are busy with family etc not sure i will try with this i want to say thank you for being here and may the lord bless you and as you see islam is nothing but a pure 
joke. It's a stupid cult, does not match, does not fit with the simple logic of a child. You have to be literally illiterate, as Muslims they claim that their prophet was illiterate, to believe in such illiteracy about God. Satan, who is a good guy, God, who is a bad guy. Angels, who they are better than Allah. Angels, who knows more than Allah. Angels, they protect Adam, predict, predicted that Adam would do mischief, and Allah does not agree. And then we find that Adam, he did, and the angels were right. Everything in this cult is stupid, and nothing match anything good in the book of goodness. This is why I consider the Quran as a book of yellow pages, not a book of God. So if you believe in this cult, my friend, I advise you to watch my videos, read my books, and my videos for free anyway. I have English videos. And I challenge you to maintain your belief in such a stupid cult. Where Adam, he have a destiny to commit sin, yet Adam have to be punished and get out of heaven for a degree Allah he made in his destiny. How stupid, how silly. What is justice? There's no justice in this cult. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, Islam is false. I mean to that. Thank you.